Hey guys, welcome back to MassiveSynth.com tutorials. This video is kickstarting the new feature we're going to be doing this month, which is focused on making trap sounds with Native Instruments Massive. And I'm going to start today by doing a tutorial about making a kind of drum sequence with a kind of sub bass line in there as well. So I'm just going to hold down C3 note here. And all of this programming is going on in here basically using these performers and this stepper so let's start off create a new sound in massive go to oscillator one and we're going to use a sine wave this is going to be the kick drum here so go to sine square pitch this down two octaves pull the wave table position all the way to the left keep the intensity on full and the amp on full we're not going to be using any filters for this sound so just leave all of this as it is so just quite a simple sine wave to start with. Let's go to the voicing section, make sure the sound is monophonic and go over to the oscillator section and just take the glide off and just check this restart via gate. And let's go to this amp envelope as well. Just pull the attack up so we've got a nice sharp attack. And let's go to this first LFO here and let's program in this kick drum sequence. So we can change this LFO to a performer and drag the crosshair of this performer to the pitch modulation slot of oscillator 1 and take the amount up by plus 12. And then let's set up this performer so we can sync it, take the ratio to 1 over 8, pull this X phase sequence to the top so it's just this top sequence what's going to be affecting the pitch of this oscillator so at the moment you should have something like this so let's use some more plucky envelope curves to just give the kick a bit more of a sort of a shorter decay I guess so I'm going to use this top right envelope here and just going to take some of the volumes of these off and do the same, have the same envelope on number 15 so now we have this kind of kick sequence going on and we can do a little bit of a kick roll in, in here as well about halfway on this sequence so add another one of these plucky envelopes Okay, so that's our kick sorted for now. Let's move over to this second LFO and make this a performer as well. And this is going to be the clap and hi-hats, basically. So we're going to use this to modulate the white noise over here. So drag this crosshair over to the amp of the white noise and pull the, pull the modulation amount up to full. And then... Let's pull this colour down a little bit. The colour kind of acts as a filter for this noise, so... Somewhere around two thirds should be alright. And let's do a similar thing again with this performer. We'll sync it. We'll keep the ratio 1 over 16 for now. Pull the X phase sequence to the top. And just pull the volumes down of all of these apart from on step 9. Leave this triangle shape as it is. And now... got a little bit of a clap in there and we can do a sort of clap fill as well by loading in a few more curves so get these this curve here and just do a couple of these at the end of the sequence okay so next we could set up the bass line that we had playing there initially we can use a stepper to do this so this third LFO becomes a stepper sync it again take the ratio to 1 over 8 and use this to modulate the pitch of oscillator 1 so drag the crosshair of this stepper over to the second pitch modulation slot and we're going to go plus 12 on the amount as well this time and this is not going to have any effect on the sound until we start programming some steps in here so what I'm going to do is I'll go plus 12 on 3, 4 and 5 we're getting that 
kind of like shift on this sub. It's like a sort of bass line, basically. It's like the notes going up to plus 12 semitones on that steps 3, 4 and 5. But we could make it even more interesting using this glide modulation feature here. So with this on full, activate the glide modulation slot on these two steps. So now that stepper is going to sort of it's going to have a glide basically between the notes so you can hear that if I take it off now so you can dial that in as much as you want really I have it on I had it on full there so it's got quite a nice sort of glide in between the notes okay so next up we can add a bit of classic tube just to beef the sound up And we can add some reverb as well. And with this reverb, push the colour up to about three quarters. Keep the density and size halfway. And then just pull the dry wet down to about a quarter of the way. And what we can do with this dry wet and the reverb is drag this crosshair, this performer, to the reverb dry wet. Drag up a little bit. And now we're going to get a bit of extra reverb on, because this performer is the clap, basically. So now we're going to get got a bit of control clap reverb on on there so which is pretty cool and another thing actually this first performer here drag the crosshair of this to the first modulation slot on the wave table position of this oscillator and so we can control how much on the kick drum only this is not going to affect this step here the the bass line basically the sub just on this kick drum we can control how much square wave we have in the kick drum which is pretty cool so it's a little bit of square wave but and having that more square wave is just pulling out a bit more of a transient and a bit more top end in the kick drum, which is pretty cool. So, And that's everything with the sound, really. A kind of a sequenced sort of drum and bass sound, quite useful for trap music and also... You know, you can play it up and down the keyboard. Sounds quite cool. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Any questions, then please get in touch. And I hope to see you again soon. Cheers.